All right, peace and black power, everybody. I want to welcome you to another NCRBGZ Productions. And today we got a nice show lined up for the family. We got some things that we wanted to talk about. But like always, listen, like the video, share the video, give me a thumbs up, follow me on Anointed Hands, um, leave a comment. And let and let the family know, man. CRBGZ, we live. We about to get it in. We about to jump right in. Hot topics. Um, like always, what I want to do, I want to give my panel members the opportunity to introduce introduce themselves to the family, and then we gonna then we gonna jump right in. Peace, family. This uh Nev Up coming in to listen and learn, and talk about a few things with the brothers. And sisters is coming in um little at little shortly. My parents might do whoever else. Peace. Go ahead, Trap. Introduce yourself, Travis. Oh, want me to introduce myself? <clears throat> yeah. Well. Yeah, my name is uh, Travis, man. Just just here to uh, fellowship and get a, a different opinion on, on certain views, the community, and maybe add some input as well. All right, we appreciate you. Um, um, uh, hey, brother, uh, Ricky, you want to introduce yourself, family? Peace, families. Ricky, you know, I know I ain't been here in a while, but, you know, I'm always with you, always. Just come in, you know, check and see what y'all brothers talking about tonight. All right, that's what it is, man. And also, I thank y'all for taking time off y'all busy schedule also to be here because y'all can be doing anything but being here with us, right? So we're going to jump right in. We're not going to play with this thing, family. Um, As we all know, um, it's a lot of things that's going on. So we have some some things that I wanted to discuss for a quick second. All right, so first we're going to start off with the shooting of our brother um, Jacob Blake. Uh, we all seen what happened. If you've seen the video, um, you know, you saw that the brother was shot in the back four times, I mean seven times, by an unidentified police officer whom they have not yet to um, identify who the shooter was yet. Um, the brother, um, children was in the car with him. And, you know, we all seen the video. And, you know, it comes to a time, a point in time, where we always talking about stuff like this happening. Because it's happening so much, it seems like we always are talking about it and reacting to it, right? So um, I got a little different approach that I'm going to take with it tonight. But what I want, I want y'all to, um, you know, y'all jump in, mute y'all mic. And what I want y'all to talk about the situation, how you feel about the situation, you know, um, you know, and then we're gonna go forward. I have a different approach I'm gonna take, so I want y'all to start off though. Um, so I, I started off, man. I feel like the only way they're gonna stop killing us, man. To be honest, man, they're gonna have to hold police officers accountable. Like, stop giving them a slap on the wrist like letting them get fired they should make it mandatory like you you gonna do prison time like i'm not talking about like a year or two like if it was mandatory they did like a 30-year print a really lengthy prison sentence that would send the message but for the most part when cops kill uh when white cops kill black people it's you know they get fired you know swept under the rug or something like that i feel like it has to be really like subtle change you know and we can't rely on certain, you know, the DA and the uh, attorney generals or the sheriffs. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like we have to have, like, somebody that's for the people, man, somebody that can relate to us. That's like, on the sheriff, sheriff's department and the attorney generals. That's my opinion. Yeah, I basically feel the same. Uh, we need to start holding these people accountable, man. And, um, I believe that's a brotherhood. You join the police, you join the, it's like a brotherhood, sisterhood. Right? I believe one do something, mess with their money, man. Everybody got to feel it. Take everybody $5,000 off the um, salary, uh, $10,000. Yeah, right, if you start playing with their money. 
That's how I feel like it. Everybody, not just not just one cop. All the cops. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the one who did it, need to do dirty to life. If you kill a brother or sister or anybody out of uh like that, you need this, this like come on man, you should know better. You've been trained for this stuff. This is a serious job. We're not animals, you gotta treat everybody the same. And we're seeing right now, we're not getting treated the same. We're seeing a whole lot of white privilege. We're gonna call it call it spade this way. I'm gonna go past some. Y'all yeah, brothers here. Yeah, we're yes, here, brother. Um, we just All need right. to take we just need you to take your screen save off, man, so that um, people can see you, bro. All right, man, man, man. Cut light on that so dark. Yeah, but I, I agree with y'all brothers, man. I agree with what y'all are saying. But I do think you know, everything within bounds, trying to go about it, you know, a legal way. You know, I understand you can't be out here, you know, just acting like savages, but at the same time, we got to take responsibility as our people to, you know, ensure our survival. Because, you know, ain't nobody give them the rights to just go out here and murder us like that. And I don't believe they're going to stop. I don't even believe there's no amount of legislation, no amount of anything, no amount of protest, no shade of protesting now. Any form of resistance is still resistance. But I don't think that it's going to, I know, I know that it's not going to make them stop. They've been doing this for too long. This is the foundation of America. This is like telling Americans to take the stars and strikes out of the flu. It just ain't going to happen, man. Do what we need to do to make sure that we can at least protect ourselves. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah, you know, um, I agree with both, all three of y'all brothers, you know. Um, um, you know, it comes a point where strategies just go out the window, right? Because we are innate to survive. Survival is what we are all predicated to do as human beings. It's in our nature to survive <clears throat> and do whatever it takes for us to survive. But somehow, we have got confused on how to survive when it comes to certain type of altercations. So we will forget how to survive when certain people are the ones that are trying to apprehend us or talk to us, right? But if a regular person is trying to do that same thing to you, you know how to survive. It's innate. You don't think about it. You make sure that you're going to survive and go home to your family. But for some odd reason, that goes out the window. You know? And I'm going to leave that at that. But when it comes to these police forces and you, and all cops ain't bad. We all know that. But it has to come a point in time where in either they are going to change something or we're going to have to change something. It's just cause and effect, man. That's life. It's cause and effect. So it's, I mean, I don't, I, I can't spell it out for you. But we all know either they're gonna change or we gonna change. And it is and it is what it is. Now we can talk about legislation, you can talk about the police unions, you can talk about how they may need to decide to um make it so that if your partner does something, that you are held liable for it as well, since they're on the buddy system. So if you got two police officers in the same car, if one police officer does something, you both have to pay the price for it. Maybe then stuff will start changing because maybe then if my partner is doing something and I'm going to go to jail behind it, I'm going to tell him to stop because now we are both held liable for whatever is going on, right? That Either that needs to happen or these police unions need to be disbanded. 
right? Because you can't have a police union that's always defending somebody when you know they're wrong. You can't talk about legislation because you don't supposed to shoot somebody in the back anyway like this. So like, yo, it's simple. It's very simple what should happen. The question is, have we lost our ability to survive? That's the question. So I'm, I'm going to leave that alone, man. I don't want to say too much. I'm going to just say that my approach is very simple. We all here to survive. I have children. I want to get home to my children at night. So I'm going to do whatever it okay. takes for me to get home to my children. Can I say that? Bottom line. Go ahead, brother. Jump in. Can I? Yeah, I was going to say something too, man. Police officers have a fear of black people. And I feel like, you know, some of them are already paranoid and timid just around us. So their first reaction is to shoot and kill because it, it was embedded in, in them. I think Brother Cam said this um, to me earlier. You know, some of these white police officers, racism, hardcore racism was embedded in them. And as far as, you know, they're uncomfortable around black people and they just have a fear of us, you know? If you think about it, the targets they shoot are black. All the targets. When you do target practice, what color is the sheet of paper that you're shooting? Your target is black. So, but even with that, see, look, I'm at the point now, no more excuses. Why we keep making excuses? It is, there's no excuse. It, you, you can't say that they're afraid because the way they're killing us don't seem like they're afraid. You get what I'm saying? It, it, so that's out the window. Now, we know that it's reports that the um, the um, the um, KKK has infiltrated the police force. We already know this, right? And you and, and so you even have black cops now that are just as bad as the white cops. So when, it's a systematic thing. It's systematic with this. It's a systematic problem. And there's no uprooting this systematic problem because for one, you have to understand what the purpose of the police is. See, we think the police is here to protect and serve. That was the purpose of them prior to 9-11. And after 9-11, I forgot the name of the act that was passed, the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act changed a lot of things. So that protect and serve is out the window now. Whenever you're pulled over, as soon as they see you, you are a target. Yes, Garrett, we did see the same video. And if you want the link, Garrett, I will give you the link so you can come in. If you want the link, Garrett, hey, Adams, let me know. I'll give you the link so you can come in. But you have to understand that when it comes to policing, they're here for property. That's what they're here for. The protect and serve is out the window. Because as soon as them cop, them lights, as soon as them lights get behind you, you don't feel like they're serving you or protecting you. As a black man and you driving down that road, as soon as them lights get behind you and they pull you over, you don't feel nothing about no protect and serve. You're automatically, well, you feel like you are what a target. And as soon as they come to their car, they will tell you they are trained to look for infractions. They are trained to look for anything that's out of the ordinary because you are automatically a suspect when you have encounters with them. That protect the, you're not, they're not protecting and serving you. You are a suspect. So therefore, they are looking for reasons. They are looking for any type of infraction because that is how they are trained. And it's a systematic problem. But y'all yeah, jump in, man, because um, I don't want to do all the talking. Yeah, man, we got a problem. We got a problem, family. Um, they can't say training no more. They've been trained. They can't say scared no more. They just pure down racism. We got to call the spade a spade. And um, you know, from what I heard, the mother of the brother, um, the brother Jacob, is forgave already. Forgave the killer. The killer cop. And you know, my opinion, we, 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 like you said, like, like Brother Stewart said, we ain't here to survive. 
We ain't even survival mode no more. We just gave up. But when it comes to our own kind, we don't even forgive family. We got people family over dumb stuff 20, 30 years ago, dumb stuff. But somebody like them can come out here, kill your family, kill your son, spit in your face, you automatically forgive them. So, you know, it's a systematic thing, and it's also it's a mental thing, too. We've been broken down as a people, man. Mentally and spiritually. And that's all I'm going to say about that. That's you in the building. Yeah, peace, peace, family. Just, I'm just wrapping up here uh, <clears throat> what I'm doing. Uh, but anyway, what, 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 what y'all talking about? Brothers getting killed? Sisters getting killed? Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, Same yeah. I, song. I call, Same song. Yeah, I feel you. But, you know, man, on, <clears throat> for real, for real, man, the only, the only way – what's my car? The only way stuff going to change, man, like <clears throat> nothing's going to change for us until we get power. We just don't have no power. We don't, we don't have no power, we, and we don't have no power structure. So, like, for example, for real, on some real stuff, black people have to, you know, obviously want to come together, but you need black people in, in position. Like, you need black lawyers, black politicians, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, black senators, black governors. You need people like that on, on the line for you. People that you can get on the phone to help really push some stuff through. That's our issue. That's our that's our problem. Like, we we'll, we we'll, we'll sit and argue, talking about oh the Democrats gonna do this or Republicans. Don't know. Don't care about no black people. To them, you know, a lot of them. To a lot of them, you know, you ain't you ain't nobody. Money make the world go round, man. Money, money and favors. You get what I'm saying? Money, money and favors. You know, it ain't no it ain't no power in running no gang. You're on a block. <clears throat> you you know what I'm saying? That's that's no power. And then for real, we mad at the police. Honestly, we should. Well, I ain't gonna say we shouldn't be mad at them. <clears throat> The, the police are basically the bottom tier of the of the structure of stuff. If you really do the math to it, they have a they are all they're doing is and and acting laws and doing things, but they're at the bottom of the food of the food chain. All they are is just an enforcer of what's already there. If something was going to change, it, it, would, it would have to change from the top. So we we trying to change something at the bottom. It's not going to work. We have to find our way. We have to find a way to get ourselves at the top, man. So you know, black people have to be, become police officers. When I say black people, all Oh, skin folk ain't your kin folk. They have to have your same mentality. I'm not saying being being black and treating everybody wrong who is not black. That's not what I'm saying. But when you out there, you you want freedom, justice, and equality. You know what I'm saying? You making sure everyone is being treated equally. If you are a governor, that's you, you know you making sure everyone is treated equally. And so until we have things like that in our nature, nothing's going to ever change, man. As long as we out here, and I'm gonna say it and make people mad. As long as we out here killing each other, you know what I'm saying for nothing. We won't forgive our own brother and sister, but yet we expect these politicians and stuff to take us serious. They will never take us serious. They will never do that. One, you ain't got no money and you don't have no power. What you gonna, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why? What, like, what you gonna do? What, what you gonna do? Me stop, stop this for what? You don't, you don't, you're not offering me nothing, man. You know, I'm a businessman. When you sit down at the table with somebody, it's a negotiation. What do you have to negotiate? You understand? You, you know what I'm saying? You, you have no power to negotiate. We don't have that. And so, you know, again, I go back to, to, to what I've said, and I will always say this, man. You have to have power in order to make things change. Power is what makes things change, man. And until you have power, until you understand how power works and how business and stuff works, because all America is, is just a really big business, a corporation. That's all it is. If you wanna, if you, and if you want to slide it under being a country, you can say that. It's, it's, just a, it's, a really big, it's just a business, man. That's all it is. And until you learn how to play like they play, it's always going to be what it is, man. All, you know, the, um, the Asians have, have, have learned some of it. They got their own communities, et cetera, et cetera. The Jewish people, they've learned it. And I'm not mad at them. I mean, they, they doing what they're supposed to be. They own code. They, they are own code. We always at war with each other, man, for nothing. You understand what I'm saying? We're at war, and we don't have no power. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no power saying this, this block, block, but a, a cop came in and said, man, get, you know, like, man, get, up, get up off this curve. That's not your block. It ain't, that ain't your block, man. Black people need to come together by real estate, get into the stock market, get y'all bread together, man. Get, get your people in the political office. Start raising your kids up to understand politics, to understand money, put our kids in any different position. You start putting your people in these situations, man. You get what I'm saying? Like the slave owners left generation, generational wealth for their family members. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just financial, man. It was connections. 
connections of power. If you ever get into a situation and you need something, call my friend here. Oh, this, this uncle such and such. You know what I'm saying? This uncle such and such. Or this auntie such and such. If you ever get down here with the police, just tell them that, you know, I'm your daddy. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't have that, man. <laughs> we don't have that. We look at every cop as the enemy. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but what I am saying is we got to start thinking, like, you know, how can we go and politic with these people and get some of our people in there? Now, I don't know what gender going out killing nobody, but I'm talking about people who are going to be there for you that's going to help police your neighborhood right. Going to make sure that your people are being treated fairly and equally. You dig what I'm saying? What, is what I'm saying make sense? Know, um, um, Master you, brother, um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to drop the bomb on you, brother. Bomb um, it. Go ahead. It don't matter who you put in. It's the system in itself. And I'm going to give you a good example. You look at Ghana, right? Ghana. They have adopted the United States policies as far as their constitution, as far as their government, as far as their military, as far as their police force. So now you have Ghanaians, or the whole police force are Africans, black folks. They had a Black Lives Matter protest in Ghana. And guess what happened? The police beat the protesters up. Because it's not who you put in, it's the system in itself. This is why when they first sent the, the slaves from America, what's the state in um, um, the country, in, um, what is it, on um, um, in Africa? They sent their own um, slaves over there from America and they established their own state. They still there today. But they Liberia. were- huh? Liberia. Liberia. They, was the, the, they were warring with the traditional people there because of the governmental structure that they imposed that they brought there from America. And to this day, if you pay attention to Liberia, they are ran just like America as far as their governmental structure. And look well, at- Seth, you, pro Seth, you proved my point though. What I'm saying is, to go back to what I really said about power, about power. You, so basically, all you, what you, you proving my point. You, we basically saying the same thing, man. We just on, we saying the same thing, we saying it in a different way. So that's why I say all skin folk ain't your kin folk. There are yeah. some people who perpetrating their, their, so like, for example, if they're adopting everything that's European, that's not, that's not African based. African people still don't have no power. All you're doing is promoting a European agenda. What I'm saying is, if you are in the position of power to now where you can change the, the system, you can begin to change and enact laws. You, you can dismantle that stuff. Until we get into that mind frame and taking that, that step towards obtaining that power, we will always be in a situation. That's why, that's why, that's why I said what I said, man. Every black person that, that's a governor or, or you know, mayor, whatever, or police, they all, don't, they all of them don't care about black, they don't care about black people. They don't. But I'm saying we have to put people in a position in order to, to change the laws, in order to eradicate the system. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we have. That's, I that's agree, like, I, I agree that, man. But I don't see. I don't see the system never being eradicated from within. Because for one, the way the system is set up, um, like one person ain't gonna get in there and change. You gotta have a majority. Just like you got, you got three functions of the government. You get what I'm saying? You got the uh, House, you got the Senate, then you got the White House, right? So you got three functions. You have to be able to control all three, or at least two of, um. Um, or at least two of the major positions to get laws passed. Now, locally, you can do that locally. You can get certain things come, but on a federal level, it's going to take people, you got to have the amount of votes, as they say. You know what I'm saying? It's a, um, you have to, that electoral college, the whole, all that, you have to have enough votes to get stuff passed. Now, um, locally, you can get certain things up on the federal level, it's a whole different ball game. And that's it was set up this way for that reason. So it's, it's, we're not going to, I mean, we can get in. Like, remember, I'm going to give y'all a good example. And I'm going to let y'all talk. Um, y'all remember back in the day, um, the police used to stay in the hood? Y'all remember that? Yes. If y'all older like me, I'm a little older. You know what I'm saying? So I remember when the sheriff stayed in the town. You know what I'm saying? I remember them days when the police stayed in the in the area that you stayed in. They stayed there also. Well, do you think? Why do you think they moved them out? 
do you think it was by choice or that was policy? That was policy. Because the police are meant to follow orders without questioning the orders, just like the military. When you're exactly. in the military, you're, you're, not meant, you're not meant to question the orders. You're a soldier. You follow the orders. It's the same with the police force. They are following orders. And they may have the wiggle room as far as how they can interpret certain things, but they're basically following orders. And this is why I'm telling y'all, that's not gonna the, even that's not gonna change putting different people in. They're just gonna get fired. <laughs> that's well, what's gonna I, happen. You're gonna get well, police officers that's gonna get fired, that's gonna lose their job because they're not gonna be willing to do. And I got videos of police officers that have got fired because they have decided they're not gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do it. They're gonna wanna uphold the constitution. So by them upholding the constitution, they are losing their jobs because it's not getting somebody in to say, no, I'm not gonna do it. Okay, you're not gonna do it, we're gonna fire you. And we're gonna find, we're gonna find somebody else that will listen without questioning what we're asking them to do. Well, um, I agree with both, both of y'all points for, the, for an example. A lot of the um, shootings are in black cities with like black uh, sheriffs and democratic cities. Like, you know, we had a shooting in Atlanta, Ferguson, you know, what, a, who, what else? Like, it seemed like in major black cities, we have had a lot of shootings, but getting, getting back to Master U point, man, um, black people now, man, think about all the black entertainers. We got Oprah, Jay-Z, Dr. Dre. Back in the 80s and 90s, we didn't have like black people that had that was worth like billions of dollars. We have the ability to um, obtain power because we have money. But I just feel like the black leaders or the black, um, the wealthiest black people in America aren't coming together to put their money together to uh, to get these people out. Because you know, like Master, you was saying, it's it's, it's a power game. I mean. You know, just in the music industry, let's say, for example, in the 70s and 80s, you know what artists used to, artists used to say back in the 80s? Rappers were like, well, this white guy owned this uh, record company, man. They forced us to put out, to put out um, certain music, negative images. But now you think about all these, um, Dr. Dre, the Diddy's, the Jay-Z's, all these um, the dude from Cash Money, all of these uh, black entrepreneurs that's worth millions and billions of dollars, guess what? The negative images are still getting put out there. I just feel like, you know, going back to what you were saying, you know, just like with the music industry, it's already been in place for us to put out negative images for us to do X, Y, and Z. And it's, you know, coincides somewhat with like the police force, you know, it seemed like, I guess the black people that do have power in America aren't using it to their advantage. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's a good, that's a good point, brother. I'm, I'm telling you, man. The only way this only way the only way to change this the only way to change this is one the black people have to understand and obtain knowledge of self. That's like that's that's first and foremost, and then you have to get your mentality away from being an eighty five percent of within a five percent nation. Eighty five percent of the people on this planet are blind, deaf, and dumb. It's point blank and period. Not saying that they're not smart, they're not intelligent, they don't have degrees behind them but they have no knowledge or sense where they come from and their place in the world. You understand what I'm saying? And, and I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm a pull from a degree in the one to 36, our fourth degree, we call it the culture degree. Um, it say he does not talk his own language and then the power degree, which, which, which is the, the fifth degree. Um, uh, the, the power degree says that, uh, You celebrate all their holidays, you eat what they eat, you wear their jeans, you wear their clothes, you do all of this stuff. This, this is what you do, this, that's what you do. So then when you get on the police force, that's all you know, because that's, you, that's all you've known since, you were being, since you've been born. And your grandma, your granddad and all of them, they perpetuate the exact same, the exact same system. Which, this is why um, uh, Elijah Muhammad was saying that 
you know, he talked about separation and, and talked about black people, you know, obtain a knowledge of self and then also doing for self. But the main thing of it is you have to understand who you are and your place in this world. If you do not know those things and you don't stand on that type of righteousness in your life, then of course, if you become a governor or a mayor, you're not going to be for black people. You're not. You can be with lying in your own pockets. If you own an NBA team or you, if you own TV networks, you get what I'm saying? You, 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 you all you're going to do is further perpetuate their system. That's all you're going to do. But once you obtain knowledge of who you are and you stand firm on that, you understand what I'm saying? And that becomes your, your, not just the, the, what you are aware of, but that becomes your, your culture. That becomes your way of life. And you get these people in here. You understand what I'm saying? Who are, who are not only um, these people who are, who are judged righteously and, and deal with equality. That's really how you exact change. And so the only other way outside of that is war. That's it. I'm talking about all out blood spilling. Let's go to war. That's that's outside of outside of going political. You know what I'm saying? And taking money from somebody's pocket is war. Do history. The only way things change is a loss of money or blood getting spilled. That's it. That's that's really it. And a loss of money is based on a political game. You playing politics with somebody money. You you politicking. Outside of that, man, it's war. Hey, you know what um, I'm saying? It, it, you know. Yeah, um, you're right, brother, um, Master you and, you know, um, I agree with you, man. Just understand, I do. But, uh, you know, I'm just at the point now where, in, um, um, you know, we trying and trying, you know, and trying and trying, and, you know, it gets to a point where in we know what we got to do. It doesn't matter are you willing to do it. Well, that's just where it's at with it, right? So, um, but what I want to do is um, I want to give the rest of the brothers opportunity to, to talk on this because I did want to move on um, to another subject. Um, it's still all dealing with the same um, situation. It's all planned. Actually, we'll, we'll go right into it since you're talking about leveraging our power, right? So what I wanted to do was talk about the NBA, the NBA players. They um, didn't play today. So the, the playoff games have been postponed because the NBA players first on Milwaukee, the Bucks did not come out and play their game against Orlando today. So it has been postponed. So now you have NBA players who are really taking a stand, making a stance um, and starting to as you say, flex their muscle a little bit as far as when it comes to the NBA and the playoffs. And I wanted to um, get y'all opinion on that. Um, and I'm going to play a video of um, a couple people that spoke about this situation. Um, y'all want me to play the video first and then y'all comment or y'all want to go and comment now? We'll play the video first. All right, so all right, y'all give me a second. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm play LeBron James. You know he spoke on this. Um, he spoke on it for uh, um a quick second, and Doc Rivers spoke on it too. Um, you know I might not be able to play Doc Rivers for the simple fact that I'm live and I don't want to get a strike, but I can play the bronze and they can't strike me. So let me go to a page where I got it at. Oh, um, man, let me, yeah, I'm showing y'all everything. <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to be seeing all this. All right, so let me see. Let me see if I can find that video real fast. But, um, you know, LeBron James spoke on it and he was talking about you know, the whole situation. Where is it at? And, man, that's the wrong page. Y'all, um, give me a second, y'all. Let me just go on. All right, so, let me find it. Where is it at? Oh, it's a lot to talk about, man. All right, here go to Doc Rivers. I'm going to start off with Doc Rivers, y'all. Just, just watching the Republican convention and they're, they're spewing this fear 
right? Like, all you hear Donald Trump and all of them talking about fear, we're the ones getting killed. We're the ones getting shot. Uh, we're the ones that we're denied to live in certain communities. Um, we've been hung. We've been shot. And all you do is keep hearing about fear. It's, it's amazing why we keep loving this country. And this country does not love us back. Don't hear nothing. And it's just, it's really so sad. You say, you say you don't hear nothing? I don't. I sure don't. Hey, do y'all hear this video? Yeah, I, I hear it. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't worry about me. Like, I should just be a coach. Damn, you, you got to make sure you, um, you got to make sure. It's so that often. Reminded of up, up. my color. It's gotta be just, you know, this, this actual you know it's just really sad. We gotta do better. Uh, but we gotta demand better. Right. Like we got you know, it's it's funny. We protest and they send riot guards, right? Uh, they send people in riot outfits. They go to Michigan with guns and they're spitting on cops and nothing happens. Training has to change in the police force. The unions have to be taken down in the police force. My dad was a cop. I believe in good cops. We're not trying to defund the police and take all their money away. We're trying to get them to protect us. Just like they protect everybody else. Uh, and how dare the Republicans talk about fear? We're the ones that need to be scared. We're the ones having to talk every to every black child. What white father has to give his son a talk about being careful if you get pulled over? All right, fellas. Um, if y'all heard that, um, you know Doc Rivers, he um, he was very emotional when they interviewed him um, and he talked about this situation. Um, and, you know, that's his sentiment. So what do y'all think about that, man? Um, while y'all do that, I'm going to pull up another video because I think Kenny Smith, he said it all, man. He, he, he just... How you feel about Travis? you think about Travis? I feel like, uh, wait, uh, I feel like um, it's about time, you know, and, um, I commend the NBA for protesting gangs, but going back to what Master you were saying, man, they should put their money together. Like, you know, protesting is cool, man. Like Cam always said, is we've been protesting, man, for 80 years, man, but I just feel like we need to put our money together financially and vote some of these <laughs> vote some of these racist politicians out, man. Vote them out, man, or or do something with our money that's gonna you know, that's going to make like a drastic change to implement change, you know, instead of just, just, you know, protesting, you know, I mean, I feel like it's a great start. Don't get me wrong, man. You know, I don't want to sound negative, man, but we have to do something to put our money together, you know. I basically feel the same way. Maybe a little stronger than you. I don't know. I don't know, but I commend the NBA for doing things. The NFL, you know, they a little tight in that, stiff in that, whatever. But I'm commending the NBA for respecting what's going on. Um, people are tired. We done tried the praying. We done tried the marching, protesting. They did every damn thing, man. What what, what we have, have we done to them? You know? And it's signaling, signaling to keep, we, 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 you know, we sound like breaking, broken records, man. Broken records ever since the Sithers, since Martin Luther King. Only thing about it, it's being recorded by these phones. NWA, you know, so we're talking about fuck the police and shit, you know, and things were still going on in the 70s, you know, and, you know, in the 80s. It was still going on. It just swept under the rug. And um, these phones, man, which they, some of these racist politicians hate these phones, talking about technology, because 
they're getting caught up in, you know, a lot of them people getting caught up in their uh, stuff. <laughs> the stuff they've been trying to hide for years. People are now, they're getting exposed now. So they didn't want to shut down the damn technology all of a sudden, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, yeah, we got to try something different, man. Uh, we got to look at the things like the Muhammad way, the Garvey way, build like Dr. Malachi Z. York, build like Father Allah with the 5% nation. We we, we didn't try it. We didn't, look, for the majority of us, we didn't try it every way. We didn't try King way, Justice Jackson way, Al Sharpton way. We didn't try TDJ's way. It is not working. It's failed for the majority of us as a people. It has failed. And that's what I'm going to pass and make the message to you. I mean, yeah, bro. Yeah, Neb, you know, you basically hit it on the head, man. It is, you know, it's, it's, it is a broken record. You pretty much just like every other week, man, you know, one of us getting killed. And, um, yeah, you know, all that. That's why I don't march. That march, marching don't do nothing. Marching, marching don't do nothing at all. They don't, they don't do nothing. It don't, it don't change anything. Um, it just, it just don't. So, you know, I, I, I don't, I personally don't march. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking for somebody else to do it. But um, again, I, I, I would say this now, forever say this. In order, in order to exact any, any type of change or anything, you gotta have the power to do so. You gotta have the, you know what I'm saying? And the only way that you're gonna get power, you have to first obtain knowledge. You gotta obtain what knowledge, you know what I'm saying? And you just gotta go get knowledge first and you have to be aware of something. You gotta, you gotta know what's out there and how to do certain things. And if you don't have the knowledge to do something, it's like pretty much somebody who's sailing, man, no matter where, if you don't know where you're going, the wind can blow anyway. It's not in your favor because you, you're not aware, you don't know anything, you, you don't. And so, you know, Again, we, we need we need we need power, and power ain't coming from <laughs> no disrespect. Power ain't coming from from protesting. Power ain't coming from Black Lives Matter. <laughs> it's already been proven. It ain't <laughs> it ain't coming from that. I'm not knocking people that's doing it, but it ain't coming from that. It's just not. Power comes <laughs> again when you are aware of something and you understand how it works, and then you know that you can exact, you have the power, then you, you can begin to make things happen. And black people can make things happen, but I go back to, like I said earlier, like I said, in these, in, in these degrees, in the culture degree in the, in, in the one to 36. My uncle does not talk his own language. The power degree, he does not know he's my uncle. You basically, all this stuff is saying is that you don't know your culture. Everything that you have been surrounded with is theirs. It is not yours. And when one of us go to try to give somebody some type of knowledge, not beating them out of the head with it, they go and say that you talking that, that, that black stuff, or you talking about, or you trying to be a whip, nigga, nigga, you think you smart, you think you all this. It's always hit with negativity. And so um, you have to get like-minded individuals, like, you know, like yourself, and you all have to begin to build something. That's just what it is. Everybody who, who tried for the basketball team don't make it. They just, they just don't. Everybody ain't on the team. You know what I mean? They just not on the just not on the team. You 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 know you weren't good enough, and some people not even gonna try out. So, yeah, that's just what it is, man. I I am in the mind frame, and some people may not like what I'm about to say. I don't. Every black person ain't for black people. It just, they just it just not, and you're not. I mean, it just not. Nice. You, nice. It, it just nice. you know it 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 is what it is, man. You, you know, every black person ain't for black people, and black people they have to get over have to learn. <laughs> Learn to get over it and, and keep it pushing and keep it moving. Find your people like yourself who are like minded and you all work together to build something. And what you build, you add on to it by teaching your family and, and teaching the people who want to learn it, who want to learn it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, um, I agree with you. You know, I'm the financial literacy man. So when it comes to that, when it comes to finances, I'm all for it, man. Um, I agree though, you know, and you know, knowledge itself is very important. See, that's the problem. You got a lot of people that's dumb, deaf, and blind that really don't know who they are. So once you know who you are, it's just like when you know better, you do better. You're not going to keep making the same mistake over and over again because you're supposed to learn, right? But if you keep making the same mistake or keep doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result, that's the definition of insanity, right? You don't want to keep trying. So you look at our situation. What's funny is, is this, man. It's like the, uh, 
I don't, it's like some people would rather see the states burn or, or cities burn instead of fix this injustice and inequality. They would rather for you just to burn stuff up, demolish stuff, and instead of just fix the problem. It's like, it's like where is the humanity in this system that we are a part of? Humanity is gone. This system is full up of money, greed, lust. And that's all it is. There's no balance. There's no myot or no humanity in it. Like, you can't just shoot somebody seven times in the back unless you have lost your humanity. You feel as if you're in control. You're the judge, the bench, the juror, and the executioner. And you know that you are not going to get punished for your actions. There's nothing humane in what's been going on. Now, um, I love what the NBA players are doing. Um, they do have money. They do have platforms that they, and I think this is a good step. It's a historic step. I also want to, let me play this stuff. Because um, I think um, Kenny Smith, he, um, he said a lot here, man. So I want to play this. All right, let me see. Hopefully this. Talk about how helpless the players could feel inside that ball. Hold on, I'm going to start over. Whatever you think can affect change, that's who you need to vote, vote for. You know, I didn't realize that until I saw Doc Rivers' emotional talk about how helpless the players could feel inside that bubble. Like, they can affect change, but they can't from the bubble yeah. because they can't leave and they can't partake in anything. So I just realized that by seeing that. Secondly, you know, I think as, I, I'll, I'll just speak for people that, like, that's in my circle. I think, I, I can't speak for all black Americans, but I can speak for the people in my circle. At times we feel like um, we're the realest Americans. Like we're born here, right? We, we were born here. And then we fought for the country. We fought for the Bible. We fought for all of these things. We marched. We protested in certain ways. And it seems like other groups get to skip the process. We've been the process of everything that is supposed to be American, but in turn, we don't get the benefits of it. So that's how you feel. It's like, wait, this is what, you, this is what Americans supposed to be. We fight for the country, we do all it. But we, everyone else gets to skip processes and don't have to deal with the things that we deal with. And that becomes disheartening. That's what you saw Doc Rivers say, I'm a coach, I'm not a black coach. You know, John Thompson was the first person I ever heard say that. He's like, they asked him at the end of the national championship game when he won with Georgetown, how does it feel to be the first African-American coach to win? He said, no, I'm the first coach from New England to ever win anything. And so understanding that, you know, how you're always asked that question. All of those things. Everyone else skips the process. We, we are the process. What he just said right there about the process. Like, when it comes to being American, there's no true, true American than African Americans. We have, we um, exemplify being American. We fought in every war. I'm a veteran, if y'all don't know. Heck yeah. You know, um, like we, we came here and they, they used us for manual labor. And even throughout all that, look at the accomplishments and the things that we have still brought forth to further 
civilization in America. Like, there is no one that is truer as American than African Americans. And he hit it on the head. He says, we are the...